And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the week of May 16th, 2022. I'm Jason Parent with Aroostook County Action Program. On this week's edition of ACAP Today, we're going to talk about a special event happening this Thursday. Uh, that's the 19th of May, and it's the uh, Business After Hours event in partnership with the Central Aroostook Chamber of Commerce that we're hosting at ACAP 771 Main Street. We're going to talk with an all-star lineup cast about that event in just a little bit. But before we do that, as we do at each point at the beginning of the broadcast, we're first going to get into this week's news and information that you can use again for the week of the 16th of May 2022. And we start by again sharing with you that May is Community Action Month, and we are in fact celebrating ACAP's 50th anniversary in addition to the May Community Action Month celebration. And so we are inviting folks to join us as we celebrate uh, those occasions. We've had some great events um, in Fort Kent and Madawaska up in the St. John Valley on the past two Wednesdays, some really great community engagement and folks um, enjoying some ice cream sundaes. We're doing it all again. Uh, that's this Wednesday, May 18th at our 17 Bowles Road location in Caribou. And then next Wednesday, May 25th, we will be at our 91 Military Street location in Holton. Uh, those are from 2 to 4 p.m. We're also doing some uh, actual connect to purpose moments at those where we're inviting folks to come in uh, to connect with services. And we've had a good number of folks that have come in in both Fort Kent and in Madawaska to connect with services. So if you are also looking to learn more about ACAP services, potentially sign up for including the tax preparation program that is allowing Mainers who have not filed income taxes to access the $850 payment. Uh, we're doing those activities at that uh, particular event. So please do join us, uh, come in for an ice cream sundae and learn more about our services. Uh, we also will be and are preparing for our official birthday party, the day that the Central Aroostook um, uh, Community Action Agency and the St. John Valley Community Action Council formally merged, which was June 1, 1972. So at our 771 Main Street Prescott facility, we'll have cake and ice cream on that day on June 1st. Uh, that event we're inviting the public to, and we'll be talking more about that in the coming weeks on ACAP today. Also, um, as we noted earlier in the month, we are doing Keep in Your Hometown in some of the smaller communities in Aroostook County. We've been in Southern Aroostook, um, in Weston. We were in Eagle Lake in Madawaska, or we're coming to Eagle Lake. We were in Madawaska earlier this week in Stockholm. Um, and so we're coming to Allagash uh, this Tuesday and Eagle Lake uh, at the town offices in those respective communities Tuesday and Wednesday. We will be in Limestone and Ashland wrapping up this series on Tuesday, May 24th and Wednesday, May 25th. So check out our heat team. You just need to walk in, no need to schedule an appointment. Um, and we will uh, we'll work with you to see if you're eligible for the Home Energy Income uh, Program and uh, connect with you with that program and get you started in that process. We want to just remind folks that the income eligibility guidelines for the Home Energy Assistance Program, especially in the wake of the high cost of energy right now, um, have gone up over the past couple of years. So if you want to look more closely at this income eligibility guideline, it's available right on our website under the energy section, and we encourage you to do that. Uh, many folks, especially senior citizens, uh, do qualify for this program, and we estimate that there's about 2,000 or so households in Aroostook County that are not currently in the program that may be eligible. So we certainly encourage you uh, to look into this uh, program, and this is the perfect time of year to apply. Any credit on your fuel vendor account will stay there for 18 months or until it's fully utilized. Uh, we are, and we're going to talk about this in just a little bit, co-hosting the Business After Hours celebration uh, this Thursday from 4 to 7 at our ACAP Customer Service Center uh, here in Presque Isle near Walmart in partnership with the Central Aroostook Chamber of Commerce and our friends at Katahdin Trust. Again, we'll be talking about that in just a little bit in our feature interview. We also want to remind folks that we are encouraging youth in our community aged 16 to 24 to connect with us. We have about 20 available openings right now in our youth workforce development program to connect youth with employment opportunities uh, and educational opportunities right here um, in Aroostook County in various fields and in various different levels of interest. So we encourage you to reach out to our workforce development program. We'll be talking with a representative of our workforce development program in the future interview as they are part of the Business After Hours event, and we'll learn a little bit more about this opportunity in just a moment on that as well. But do reach out, 554-4137, if you would like more information on this, or connect with Kathy Williams at kwilliams at acap-me.org. 
We are also encouraging folks out there, especially families with young children, to participate in a child care survey for families. Um, it is being conducted by Right from the Start, a coalition that works to ensure all Maine children have equal opportunity for healthy development. Uh, the survey is for parents or primary caregivers of children under the age of eight who do live here in the state of Maine. Uh, there is a link for that, or you can find a link for that on our Facebook uh, page, and it is rightfromthestart.org. Uh, you can go right to their website as well and get that survey. Uh, we're asking folks to complete it by this Friday, May 20th, uh, and the survey results will be made public after that. Uh, speaking of early care and education opportunities, now is the time for enrollment, especially for families looking to get into fall enrollment in our Head Start and Early Head Start programs uh, that su provide supports for the entire family and obviously early childhood education supports and work on school readiness and engage families as a whole. Uh, Head Start is a comprehensive program and it serves children uh, prenatally all the way up to age five. The Early Head Start program can work with pregnant mothers uh, all the way uh, to families with children up to the age of five. We currently have services uh, in Caribou, Dyerbrook, Fort Kent, Holton, and Presque Isle, and we'll be expanding this fall to Limestone and Van Buren, and we have some other exciting partnerships on the horizon that we'll be sharing more about um, in the coming weeks. Uh, they're excited about that growing and expanding program. If you have any questions or would like more information, call 554-4176, or you can complete the application right online on our early care and education page of the ACAP website. We also, we talked about this a little bit, and we'll talk with Sherry Locke about it in just a, a little bit uh, as sort of an add-on to our feature interview today. Uh, we are helping especially seniors in our community who have worked all of their lives um, but are now uh, not making a, enough in Social Security income to necessitate the need for them to uh, file taxes annually to help access the $850 relief checks that the state of Maine um, is putting out. We are working actively with the Cash Coalition and leading those efforts here in Aroostook County as the Aroostook County Action Program to help especially seniors apply to receive these $850 relief checks. Um, I can tell you from a personal perspective that um, Sherry and I and Heidi Ratcliffe and others our navigators and coaches throughout the agency have been actively uh, doing these with folks and it's just so gratifying we have folks uh, with tears in their eyes that are so appreciative uh, that they're going to be able to access this $850 per person relief check uh, within the state of Maine, especially with the cost of everything right now, and how that's helping um, to, uh, to, to sort of alleviate that to the extent possible. Uh, you can go to cashmain.org or you can just give us a call here at ACAP at 764-3721 and we'll have somebody get back to you with an appointment, um, including appointment availabilities at our upcoming open houses in Caribou and Holton. The Maine Home Assistance Fund Program, we've been talking about this one for some time, I uh, did launch at the beginning of the month of May. It is available as a federal relief program for homeowners who have been financially impacted by COVID-19. Uh, in that regard, it's similar to the rental assistance program. However, it's very different from that program. Uh, it can provide up to $25,000 per eligible household, um, and it's funded through the U.S. Department of Treasury. It's being administered here in the state of Maine by the Maine Bureau of Consumer Credit Protection, uh, and their eligibility guidelines are available on their website. They're all also listed here on the screen. You can go to maine.gov slash home assist, or again, give us a call. We are able to provide assistance with completing your application online. We can do that over the phone with you uh, through our reception team. So if you have any additional questions or need assistance with that, please call 764-3721. And we also are reminding folks as this program is waning uh, and coming into its final um, months of availability, we think at this point that the emergency rental assistance program is uh, very helpful for folks, again, especially uh, seniors in our community who are finding it very difficult to keep up with the cost of everything right now. Uh, if you are a renter, we encourage you to apply to the main rent relief program. It can help with your utilities and also your rent. Um, if you need help completing the application, 764-3721 is the place to reach out, um, or you can go to mainrentrelief.com. And again, we're happy to help you with that process. In our COVID-19 cor corner this uh, week, we want to just remind folks that the levels in Maine, uh, as more counties are now in the high status, including Aroostook County, 
Uh, we want to encourage folks that need assistance uh, connecting with vaccinations that we can also do that here by calling 764-3721 and we will help you navigate the website to find out where your closest place is to get a COVID-19 vaccination or booster shot. And we also want to remind folks that don't let the lack of transportation be a deterrent to you. There is a free vaccine ride program that's available through the Department of Health and Human Services. That number is 1-855-608-5172. They ask that you just give a 48-hour notice prior to your appointment so that they can make sure that they arrange transportation in a timely way. And free at home COVID-19 tests continue to be available through two websites, covidtest.gov and accesscovidtest.org. If your household had previously gotten an initial set of four tests through covidtest.gov, you're eligible to receive a second set uh, that was sort of re recycled uh, for folks and, and, and the ability to get those. They usually ship between seven and 12 days. So if you haven't gotten your second set and feel you might be needing them, we encourage folks to uh, register on either of those websites. Um, and also a reminder, support is available to ensure that people who have been asked to isolate or quarantine as a result of COVID-19 uh, can safely do so. Uh, ACAP, through a contract with the Department of Health and Human Services, can deliver groceries or other assistance or right to your home. Um, and we have seen an uptick in the number of individuals requesting this service as the uptick in cases in Aroostook County has gone up. Uh, we certainly encourage you to reach out or to go to the website, uh, the DHHS website, to register for this program. And if you have loved ones in other parts of the state that are also in need of this service, go to the DHHS website. Our sister caps across Maine are providing this service across the state in their respective areas. And lastly, if we've not talked about something in this uh, segment of ACAP today and you are in need of assistance, especially in these challenging financial times, give us a call at 764-3721. We have a team of navigators that are very aware of what services are available, not only within our agency, but within our community and state. And they'd be happy to talk with you about your specific needs and help connect you with those services. That's this week's news and information that you can use. I am very pleased now to welcome, as I said, an all-star cast uh, to this week's edition of ACAP Today and the feature interview. We're talking about the upcoming Business After Hours event this Thursday, and we're joined. I'm so pleased to be joined first by a first-time guest on this broadcast and a friend and partner organization of ours at the Central Aroostook Chamber of Commerce, and that's Lenise Sirwa, the Executive Director. Lenise, welcome to ACAP Today. Thank you. Good to be here. And she's joined by some familiar faces who you've seen on this broadcast before. First, Kathy Williams, who uh, leads ACAP's Workforce Development Services. Kathy, welcome back. And Thank in you. addition, there she is. And in addition to Kathy, you know Meg Hegman, who uh, leads ACAP's uh, Prevention Services uh, here at the agency. She's going to talk about how they're engaging in this program. Meg, welcome back as well. Thank you. Happy to be here. And Gloria Duncan, it's great to have you back on the program. You're going to be talking about, a you and Meg are going to be talking about the best parts of the event, and that's the food and beverage that we have. And I know that you have a great menu planned, and I'm very anxious to hear about that in just a little bit. Yes, exactly. Thank you. And lastly, sort of wrapping us all up and tying us all into a neat little bow and package is Sherry Locke, who's going to talk about why this event is so significant in terms of our ability to serve our community and how we're doing so in partnership, not only with the Central Aroostook Chamber of Commerce, but with other businesses in the region. So Sherry, thank you for coming back. Thank you for having us. All right. So let me start with you, Lenise, in terms of telling us what is a business after hours. Some folks may not be familiar with this. Others may be. I know that I, as a former chamber executive director myself, I recall hosting these back in my day in Madawaska, and they were always a good time and a really good opportunity to connect. So give us the sort of uh, 411 on business after hours. Absolutely. And I, I think for me, if I was to sum up a business after hours, it really is networking at its best. And the opportunity that is, is provided in a, in a two to three hour segment to open your doors of any entity that is a member of the chamber can, can um, have a business after hours and you can open your doors and show people things that probably they wouldn't even know that you offered. Some people have services, some people have uh, products that are above and beyond what the normal community might know. So we can get together, open the doors, have a little food and beverage, maybe some live music and door prizes, and um, have a chance to just see each other, see what the entity has to offer, 
And we've had a few so far. We've just launched this this year. Um, I have enough staff this this year to be able to be able to do this. And we've had two so far. One was at the Old Jail Tavern at Presque Isle Inn when they um, completely changed the look and reopened with a new name. And then SW Collins. And um, we really had a great time there with uh, tool demonstrations and such. And so we're excited to be able to partner with ACAP. And um, I, you guys have a lot of fun stuff lined up. It's going to be a great night. Yes, Lenise, there seems, seems to have been sort of a resurgence of this program. And really, I think it's an, an opportunity, as you said, uh, first and foremost, for some really great networking. And folks seem really excited about the opportunity to do that again um, and connect um, in, in these new and exciting ways. Uh, the, the, the two that you've recently hosted, um, what has been the sort of the, the, um, the response uh, from the community and from folks who have engaged? The response has been very exciting because when the first one we had, we expected we're, we would have been happy probably with um, probably 30 to 40 people we were expecting. House was packed. I mean, to capacity, we were out in the lobby uh, at that point at the old jail tavern. There were people that were excited that it was reopened. Some for, it was more nostalgia, you know, that they hung out there in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So to be able to walk back in that door was very exciting for them. And then, of course, they're under new ownership, so everybody wanted to meet the new owner. And then SW Collins, because they have so many new things that they're offering, there was a lot to see, a lot to look at, a lot of demos, and you know, people are just excited to get out and have that opportunity to say, you know what, let's go have a snack, let's go see um, this business, and let, what can we learn? Absolutely. And, and interestingly enough, we're sort of doing a twofer with this event. Another thing that the Central Aroostook Chamber of Commerce is, is certainly well known for are ribbon cuttings. And we're doing one of those at this event. And Sherry will talk about the significance of, of, of the partnership that sort of led to the ribbon cutting. But um, those are another um, really opportunity for you and your chamber and the members and the community as a whole to really celebrate either new or growth. Um, in this case of, of or, or changes within a, within a business. Why are those so critically important to, to our community? They're important, first of all, it's, a, it's a marketing to some extent because you know we're able to get, once we get that picture out there and into the, um, and before the eyes of the community, it's very important. It's an announcement. Anything that's an announcement, if it's a new business, an expansion, uh, relocation. And for me, it's, it's history. It creates a history of the business community. We make sure that the name is on the ribbon, nice and clear, so that if somebody finds the picture but doesn't see the narrative, they know exactly what the ribbon cutting is for. And I think that is, is critical for, to keep for historical significance. Right. And we're going to get to talking about what our ribbon cutting is all about with Sherry Locke in just a little bit. But one of the things you mentioned, Lenise, was um, a, a business after hours in terms of the opportunity to talk about programs, services, uh, and, and sometimes obviously uh, products uh, for many businesses like at the SW Collins um, uh, recent business after hours uh, that people may not realize or recognize that folks have. And in, in terms of this business after hours, Kathy Williams, one of the programs, and I, we've had it here at ACAP for a really long time, but uh, we're really looking as this is a networking, especially a business to business networking, an opportunity to talk about the great work that you and your team do in workforce development development and specifically those uh, services that we offer that are business incentives and, and, and sort of added incentives for businesses to be able to connect with our work. And right now, the opportunity to help get them uh, qualified workers uh, and individuals who become very qualified workers into their doors. So talk a little bit about what you will be uh, doing at the Business After Hours and how that work will connect with uh, customers or individuals who come through the door. Sure, Jason. So um, the team here from Workforce Development will, will, will reach out with the employers and talk to them about what the programs that we offer that are beneficial to them. I mean, we're here to work with the customers who ultimately want to find employment, but the services that we can provide employers is, is such a great thing because um, you, you know, we have folks who don't have a lot of work experience and maybe they need that, which will make the employer um, look at them a little more when they're looking at who they would hire. 
Um, and, and that program is where we place somebody in a work experience program um, with an employer. We pay the wage, we cover their, their, their wage, we cover their workers' comp. Um, all we ask from the employer is that, that they provide a safe place for them to work and, and supervision. Um, and, and that's a benefit to them. It's kind of like, you know, they can try out an, a, a, an employee before they hire them. The other program that we work, we can work with employers is, is an on-the-job training. So if they're looking at hiring somebody um, and they're and the person's eligible for our program, we can do an on-the-job training where we pay 50, we re reimburse the, the employer 50% of the wage um, set for a certain period of time where they're training these employees. So it's kind of like they're getting, you know, they're they're getting an employee for half half of the, the salary for a time um, where they're it's taking them a little more time to train them and get them up to being able to do the job. So um, that's our goal at, at this is to, you know, let the employers know what we do. And some of them don't know, some of them do know. We work, you know, we work really closely with them. Um, but, you know, for some of the employees that employers that don't know what we do, hopefully we can get that message across to them. So it really, Kathy, helps to sort of take some of the risk out for the employer of sort of, gosh, I, I really need uh, to know that this individual, the individual that we're looking to work with will hopefully work out and that they'll, they might need some additional support. So you provide both that sort of, um, sort of support for the employer with the employee to sort of walk alongside them in that journey and to hopefully uh, have a greater likelihood of ensuring success and sustainability in that workplace. Exactly. We try to provide the, the employee with supports that's going to keep them working. It might be childcare or travel. You know, they're just starting out, so they can't afford to pay childcare and travel. So maybe for a few weeks until they get a first paycheck that will help with that ch child care and travel. It might be that they haven't worked in such a long time, they don't have the appropriate clothes to go to work in a business or in a factory or whatever it might be. So there's the opportunity to buy those, those clothing, um, clothes that they'll need. Um, and or maybe some tools. They might need some specific tools um, that they need to complete that work experience or on the job training. And those are some things that we can purchase for them. So um, it's again, it's a, a benefit to our customer. It's a benefit to our employers. Um, and, and that's what we hopefully will get across to them at, um, at this open house. And, and right now, with many employers sort of really saying, gosh, we really need people to come to work for us, uh, this is an, an opportune opportunity to take advantage of a program uh, that will help you sort of get employees, prospective employees through the door and help them, again, like I said, um, maybe ensure the greater likelihood of success. Well, yeah. And you know what I would like to get across to them too is it, uh, kind of like a reverse referral. So, you know, they might get a, these folks that are applying for jobs and when they look at their resumes and or job applications and they realize, you know, they don't have exactly what they need, um, they might want to just give us a call and say, hey, I've got, you know, I'd love to give them a chance. Is there something that you can help us do to get them trained or help, you know, to get them? They, they don't have that transportation. Is there something that you can help them? We'll hire them um, if you can help us and support services. So again, those are just some really things that I think the employers need to hear um, from us. And of course, in addition to Kathy, we'll certainly have information available about other services that help both employers and prospective employees get and stay into the workforce like ACAP, child care programs or Head Start, early Head Start program, things of that nature. And of course, our prevention team where, Meg, you have both a work purpose and also you're going to really add uh, to the uh, ambiance of the festivities as well with uh, some very connect to purposeful um, activity that you'll be doing. But I guess, first of all, talk about since we're talking about connections to businesses, a number of your prevention programs really do provide um, great connections with businesses and services uh, to businesses that are helpful, like our, I'm just thinking out loud here, our, our tobacco program um, and the work that they do, really direct line connections to businesses and organizations and benefits that are provided. Absolutely, Jason. We're sort of the, uh, the um, most people think of adolescents and the things that we do for teens when they think of our prevention services department, but you're exactly right. And we're hoping to network with businesses during this event to let them know about the other services we do provide. So our tobacco prevention folks can work to update uh, smoke-free policies that will be specific to a workplace or a public setting, depending on the needs of the particular business. And it's incredibly straightforward. We had tremendous success 
by getting our community educators in front of business at the top of Maine trade show. We would love to have the same kind of um, success in talking with employers during this business after hours. Um, and really, we can do it all for you. So it's simply a matter of uh, reviewing the documents with us and signing your name. We do all of the work. We can do mini grants to support small businesses. We can provide free signage and, and all of those kinds of things to support our employers. We also offer responsible beverage service training. So for, um, for restaurants, for bars, also we could, so that would be an on-premise training for servers, we also do an off-premise. So for grocery stores or um, convenience stores that have people selling alcohol products, we can train them on how to reduce their, their own liability, their own risk of making an inappropriate sale. Um, that protects the employer, the business, as well as protecting underage uh, people from being exposed to substances before their brains are developed. So we have those, we also have, um, our restorative practices folks work with businesses. So as, as we know in this workforce shortage, um, we have to be really um, understanding and supportive of all of our employees. And so sometimes uh, we've had, as an example, you know, you might have young employees and, and there's just too much temptation. And so they end up, you know, pocketing some, uh, something that they, uh, need, you know, and before their paycheck or something like that. Well, we can work with employers on a restorative practice. So rather than saying, you know, you're done here forever, um, we can really work to say, what is, what is the repercussion of minor shoplifting? Or what is the repercussion for some interpersonal conflict? Um, maybe they're not really great at working with a supervisor, they're rude, or they have some particular exchange that is unprofessional. Well, our folks can really sit down and, and facilitate a conversation about why that matters, why that's important, and restore the relationship between the employer and the employee. There is still, they work a plan together to say, you know, this was inappropriate, we can't just not give you any consequences for that. Um, so how are you going to work to restore that relationship? And then we retain, potentially retain a quality employee and teach them the consequences of their actions in a way that really builds their skill set and brings them back into a supportive community. Um, so those are just some of the examples that we have. And we really want to talk with employers about those kinds of programs that we have available. The other piece that, um, that you mentioned that we will be bringing to the table one of the things that um, surprised me actually in the research is that young people who have employment have an increased risk for substance use. And that really surprised me because I don't know, I kind of thought, you know, students, high school students who are working are sort of the um, really active and involved and engaged and they might be at lower risk. But that turns out to not be the case. And I think it has a lot to do with how much of our work culture is surrounded with and includes use of alcohol. So if you think about uh, often business after hours and in other communities that I've lived in, they would have beer and wine available, um, holiday events that employers might host, summer picnics. Very, very often there's alcohol and the norm is let's go out for a drink after work. And so that has a tendency to normalize that behavior, which sends a clear message to 16, 17, 18 year olds that this is what it means to be part of the in crowd. And that's not a healthy message. It also alienates those who are in recovery. And as we work to support recovery friendly employers, we need to have an alternative. So one of the things that we will be providing at this business after hours is some mocktails. Um, and they are actually becoming more and more popular around the country. There are dry bars opening up. There are more and more people who are choosing to make healthier choices. And as they do that, they don't wanna miss out on the fancy frou-frou drinks. Um, they wanna be able to have something in a wine glass or a champagne flute or something like that. Um, but not necessarily expose themselves to the risk of alcohol. So 
we will be teaching um, employers as well as serving them, but, but showing you some ideas for how to make that the norm. And then for those who want alcohol and can do that safely and, and in a healthy way, then you can, you know, we're not saying you can't provide those things at your summer outings or your Christmas gatherings or whatever, but just to normalize that the first invite as people come through the door is something that everyone can enjoy so that we're not alienating those who might be at higher risk. So we will have some specific aroostic themed, we'll have a sweet, we'll have a savory, and uh, we'll have a, a cucumber based, and we'll try to hit all flavor levels and uh, give you something to really enjoy and celebrate in a healthy way. I know, Meg, you've done this uh, with, with employees here. You've done it out in the community, and it's it's always been very well received. And I know that it's also in your blood, and you and I have had this conversation before, because this is something that you and I think your dad used to, to do at uh, the Potato Blossom Festival as well uh, with Lime Rickies. So this is- We did. We did. And I have a new one that I actually just tried. Um, I was in Tallahassee, Florida a little while ago, and they had, um, there was a, a particular- bar that had specialty mocktails that they again because so many people are making this switch and trying to live healthier lives but they don't want to miss out on the atmosphere of going to a bar and so um tried a new one that i will bring to the table this time that was really fabulous it has a just a little bit of cayenne and it's it's not overly spicy but what it does is it gives you that little bit of burn in the back of the throat so if you like that feel from from a stronger alcohol like a, a whiskey or something like that this mocktail is really i found it to be really interesting i'm not a real sweet drinker so um this had that little bit of kick a really good mouth feel and it's really satisfying for those who want to skip the alcohol, but really have some good refreshment. And I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to also, I know that you're going to share some recipes uh, so folks can do these back at home, back at their uh, workplace or, or wherever else that they, they'd like to do it. And, um, yeah. and so, so great and a great way to connect to purpose with uh, our drug-free heuristic work um, uh, here in, in, in the county. So Meg, thank you for that. Gloria, that theme, Meg mentioned that there's gonna be some heuristic county theme beverage. That's gonna carry over into the food for the event, which you're our team lead responsible for the food. So um, I'm already hungry, um, but you're gonna make me even more hungry because you're gonna talk about what we're going to be serving our guests that day. So launch into it, Gloria, it's all yours. Thank you. <clears throat> and yes, correct. We are going to be having an Aroostook theme. Since the Aroostook County Action Program covers all of Aroostook, we're going to uh, we're going to be serving uh, ploys from Bouchard Farms in in the valley, um, topped with uh, Gone's maple syrup and Holton Farms butter. And then from the southern part of the uh, of the county, we're going to be serving Holton Farms ice cream with all the toppings. And for the, the uh, central part of Aroostook County, we're gonna be serving um, main mashed potatoes from Pineland Farms, topped with all the toppings and Holton Farms butter as well. So we're incorporating as much of Aroostook County as we can. Um, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be delicious. I know you're engaging a team of agency members who are going to be sort of doing this in like action stations and helping uh, to serve people. Um, and it really is a good connect to purpose moment because of ACAP's 50th uh, anniversary as well. So we're really celebrating one of the key tenants of the Aroostook County economy, which of course is the agriculture industry. Um, uh, and, and obviously uh, uh, what I think is a, a growing, and I know Lenise, you do a lot of, of work around the food industry as well with the you know cook-off event that you do in Fort Fairfield, the barbecue cook-off. We're really becoming a bit of a, of a niche uh, foodie environment up here. And uh, Gloria, you're gonna celebrate some of the best of that in, uh, in the food. Yes, looking forward to it. Yes, so your team members uh, are all excited about that as well? They are. We are going to have the stations. We're going to have a, um, a ploy station, the mashed potato bar station, and the ice cream sundae station. Um, folks can come in and partake in, in all three if they like or um, choose their favorites. We hope that they will come in and enjoy them. And your response from the business community that you've reached out to some of these um, firms uh, like Pineland Farms has been very positive, correct? Yes, Pineland Farms is donating the mashed potatoes. Yes. 
great. That's great to hear. And now Sherry Locke, part of our celebration um, on that day, on a Thursday, is going to be a recognition of, uh, of a reopening, if you will, of our 771 Main Street facility. A talk about what we've done with the facility and where Katahdin Trust sort of comes into that equation. Yeah, so one of the um, lessons that we learned during the pandemic is that our 771 Main Street office was really our customer service hub here in Aroostook County. We see thousands of customers in that location, and we really want to make sure that they're connecting to all programs and services that will best serve them and their families. So during the uh, pandemic, we actually took the time to remodel um, part of that, a, a long, large part of that office to ensure the best flow, to ensure confidentiality, some private spaces but also again that flow so that folks could um, connect to all of those programs and services um, while they're at that location. We know that transportation is such a challenge here in Aroostook County that we don't want folks having to travel multiple times into the agency to receive services. So uh, we have completed a, a, a terrific remodel and much of the community has not got to see that yet because it's been pandemic and they just we have we're just starting to get things really open back up so we really wanted to use this opportunity to invite the business community in one of the businesses that um, we will be celebrating that night is Katahdin Trust. They were a, a critical piece in helping with the funding to do that remodel. So we have um, one of the suites that we have established there is the Katahdin Trust Company Community Service Suite. So again, that includes a lot of the services that low-income um, individuals and families here in University County are going to need. So we will be doing the ribbon cutting um, to thank them for their commitment to this project and to our community. Um, they've been a great partner for years and years, and really committed to the customers, low income customers in this case specifically, that need our services. So really excited to be um, finally being able to celebrate with them because, you know, it's again, we're opening back up and really excited to do that. And Sherry, that Katahdin uh, Trust Company uh, Community Services Suite really does include programs like our Emergency Rental Assistance Program, our home, uh, Homeowner Assistance Program, and the Homeowner Counseling, as well as Home Buyer Education uh, team are located there right alongside our Home Energy Assistance Program team. On the other side of the building is where we find Kathy and her team in workforce development, but also our our WIC team and talk about what we've done in the space that we had established back in 2019 as the um, uh, Hope and Prosperity Resource Center, where we really transformed that space uh, for families and uh, individuals uh, that are looking to connect with education and employment. Absolutely. So the other wing, if you will, of the office is the Family Investment Center. So we do have, we built almost a clinic, um, if you will, a, a private space for WIC families to come in, to be able to do those clinic services, be able to connect with um, the parents and the, the children, you know, to do all of those pieces that we do in the WIC clinic. But then they're right adjacent to Kathy and her team, because we know young families, um, one of the other pieces that they need access to is that workforce. So those two um, program services, if you will, are right there together because again, it's that shared customer and we wanted again to make it as easy as possible. So we very often see that the WIC team will work with a customer and then shift them right over to Kathy and her team so they can help them with that education and training um, to reach employment. So it's it's really is a great place. That center also includes some computer workstations so that if folks are coming in and they you know need access to technology, we know that not everyone has it. Um, they can use those stations there. Um, and we have um, coaches and navigators on that in that section of the office as well. Um, sometimes we get folks that just walk in and say, I need help and I'm not sure where to start. So we really want to make sure um, that we have someone there to be able to do that initial assessment and then to make those connections to the programs and services that are needed. So the new spaces are really designed, again, to allow for that flow to be um, make much more sense for the customer, but also to ensure um, confidentiality and access to those services. So the office looks really great. And again, really appreciate um, Katahdin Trust Company um, that they shared our vision and were willing to support that project. What haven't we talked about about this event that you want to let folks know about, including sort of let me uh, do a share screen here to remind folks um, about the actual details of the event? I think for me, Jason, it's just that this is a business after hours. We certainly want the business community to join us. We want our staff members from across University County to join us, but we also want 
um, customers who may want to tour the building. You know, uh, we want anyone who's interested in learning more about our programs and services to come in. We really want folks who maybe want to try um, a, a mocktail and see what that, you know, what that's all about to come in. Um, so really, it is truly open to the entire community. We have lots of space um, and we do have lots of, of treats by way of food and drink, but we also have lots of great information and we will be having some door prizes. So um, as much as this is a business after hours, it really is for the entire community. And we really are hoping to have a, a full house. Um, when Lenise was talking about her prior two events and how they were much busier than she expected, I'm, I'm hoping that good luck um, shares to us as well. Indeed. Uh, if, and if ploys, potatoes, uh, Holton Farms dairy ice cream and Meg's mocktails don't have you wanting to come through our doors, I go, I don't know that, that there's a more appealing um, four four part series than that. And you get to, you know, chat with Kathy Williams. So you've got that and Lenise will be there as well, right, Lenise? Oh, absolutely. My entire team will be there. Uh, we'll have set up a registration table and um, oversee the drawings and such. So uh, we'll be the first ones pretty much that you see. Awesome. And Lenise, uh, Business After Hours uh, continues after that. I know you have another one already uh, planning uh, coming up. Uh, tell we, us a little bit about that one. We do. On June 9th, 180 Seal Coating that's uh, located on 4 Mekon Street in uh, Caribou. Um, they've coated my driveway. They do an amazing job. They're going to do demonstrations. Um, the Shrine Circus now has a new superheroes unit and they're trying to raise funds. So there's going to be a dunk tank. And um, <laughs> so that they can raise some funds and um, he's gonna fill bulldozers full of uh, beverage and he's gonna have food. And so that, that's gonna be a nice outdoor party because um, he wants to see, show people what they're gonna be doing. And then Haney's is actually scheduled um, on the 21st because of their greenhouses and some of their new product that they wanna feature. And then the Maysville, Maysville Museum will also be hosting one and they're gonna have live music and uh some food vendors and such so yeah we have some re a really exciting summer lined up we really do i guess it sounds exciting and of course we're uh you know looking at probably what strawberry shortcakes again and other things yes. other exciting things from the chamber we do we're uh, lining up a couple of um 30 minute briefings uh through the summer um because where we usually hold our eggs and issues they're still under construction so we're gonna uh, do uh, more zoom for the next couple of months and uh, yep, strawberry shortcake is coming up. We're planning our barbecue. And this fall, uh, we're actually going to have an apple crisp. So a little oh, something yeah. different, just like strawberry shortcake, but just nice. apple crisp on the first day of fall. That sounds great. All right. Meg, maybe we can find a way to 5210. Let's go with that. I mean, it's apples, right? <laughs> exactly. There's fruit, there's grain. Not a problem. I think we can make that happen. Yep. <laughs> all right. You're speaking my language now. All right. Well, I want to say thank you to all five of you for joining us on ACAP today. I think um, we, uh, Sherry, let's just check in really quick. As I said, I would do this. Uh, the uh, tax uh, preparation assistance that we're doing for folks for the state of Maine, uh, that's a, a really a, a going very well and really making a critical impact in our community. It is going so well. So this all kind of came together very quickly um, when it was released that those $850 checks would go out to tax filers here in Maine whose individual income was under $100,000. Um, we quickly realized that there was a very large portion of the population, primarily seniors here in Aroostook County who are not required to file taxes each year, who would not be receiving that check if they didn't have a way to access the Maine um, tax forms. So um, we've worked with Cash Maine, and um, as Jason mentioned earlier, ACAP is providing that service in Aroostook County. Um, within the last two weeks, we have over 500 seniors who have already contacted us asking for assistance. We're also working with many of the assisted living homes, nursing homes, retirement homes to be doing full days at their location. So um, I'm anticipating that we're going to serve about 1,000 seniors through this program. Um, it really, it, it's not a, a long, process. It's actually very simple for us, but the key is having the training and having access to the technology. So um, if there if there is someone in Arista County who did not file their taxes this year, who were not required to file, it's not that you were late, um, but you want to be put on that list for that $850 check, we really encourage you to call our office and we can get you on the list. We're traveling countywide to do it. Um, what we found in the last couple of weeks is um, a lot of filers are excited about the $850 check that should be uh, mailed out after June. 
But what they don't realize is a lot of them are eligible based on their income for a property tax fairness credit, a uh, rent rebate, or a sales tax fairness credit. So a lot of them, in addition to the $850 they will be receiving, are actually eligible for most of them at least another $130. And it, it, that may not seem like a lot of money on its face, um, but these seniors are seeing prices that are really going through the roof. And as we know, they're really living on a, most of them, a very small fixed income. So this is the difference between, you know, buying fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, making sure that they're able to pay for their utilities and things like that. So it's been very rewarding. Um, I don't often get the opportunity to provide direct service. And I'll tell you, it's been some of the best days. I've had some of the best days doing that in the last month or so. Our community is so appreciative and making sure that these dollars, these precious dollars are coming back to Arusta County. We know that times are, are tough. And again, this population is seeing it, um, seeing it worse than a lot of other subpopulations. The other piece that is great is while we're working with these seniors, again, the appointment takes 15 minutes, maybe if we have all of the documentation, but then we're able to connect them to other programs and services, not just at ACAP, but in our community. Um, we had the opportunity this past week you know, to connect to the rental assistance program or the home energy assistance program, but we were also able to make referrals to the Agency on Aging for their food commodity box or help someone access SNAP benefits. Um, whatever that may look like. So it really is um, our privilege to be serving the community in this way in a population that has really worked so hard for years um, and should be living their, their, you know, the, their, their end of life, their last years um, comfortably. And this is just one way to help with that. So again, I would encourage anyone who's watching this, um, if you did not file state taxes to please contact us, if it's your parents, your grandparents, we really want to help. There's no charge. I think a lot of seniors are surprised to realize after we help them, they don't have to pay us. It's again, it's our honor to be helping. Um, but if you already filed your taxes, you do not need to do anything. You will automatically be put on that list if you're income eligible. So you do not need to do anything again. So that's kind of the, the piece that we're trying to make sure people understand is oh, working folks, folks with young children, probably have already done their taxes. Those were due in April, but it's for those folks who have not done them. I worked with someone last week who hadn't filed taxes in over 30 years. Um, and again, she was concerned that she had done something wrong. She had not done something wrong. This will just help her to access additional relief. Yeah, and Sherry, I could not agree more. Very purpose-driven and heartfelt work. Um, and uh, just gives you uh, an insight into um, what a number of our seniors in Aroostook County are, are really facing on very challenged uh, fixed incomes, uh, a very modest uh, in very small means, um, and just to be able to provide them with this uh, this relief um, is is so helpful and exactly what I think our policymakers in Augusta tend, intended uh, for this program. So, so thank you to the team that's been uh, doing that and reaching out to our seniors and doing this work over the last few weeks and then weeks to come. Uh, so again, thank you to our guests uh, for talking about the business after hours and upcoming ribbon cutting, uh, all the great work that the chamber is doing and that ACAP is doing as well across the agency. We really do hope uh, that members of our business community do come and learn more about, especially the services that our workforce development and prevention teams uh, offer specifically for businesses. It's Thursday, this Thursday, May 19th from 4 to 7 p.m. at our customer service center near Walmart at 771 Main Street in Presque Isle. I'm sure we'll see our friends from Katahdin trust there as we say thank you to them and do a quick ribbon cutting uh, for that space. There'll be great food, great company, and all we need is for you to join us. Uh, before we leave you on this edition of ACAP today, just a reminder, if you'd like to join the ACAP team, we are hiring uh, in positions from Dyer Brook all the way up to Central Aroostook. I anticipate we'll have some position openings in the St. John Valley as we're growing programs there as well, especially in early care and education this fall. So be on the lookout for that if you're up in that area. Uh, but we encourage you to um, look into the opportunities on our Facebook or website um, and uh, do connect with us and submit your application online if you have interest. And lastly, as we do at each point in this program, we share with you our snapshot of the week. And given it's our 50th anniversary, we've been doing a throwback snapshot of the week each week this year. And our throwback snapshot of the week takes us back to 1977 this, this week. Uh, these were offices, ACAP's original offices 
on what where we are actually now at one edgemont drive not far from this location this was old housing or old facilities from uh, the Prescott Army Air Base that were transitioned into ACAP's first administrative offices. You can see the uh, period vehicles out there in the parking lot. Uh, this office, I am told, was very drafty. As a matter of fact, I had a conversation not too long ago with uh, our first CEO, Norm Fournier, after the merger, uh, who shared with me that there would often be snowdrifts under the doors on winter days when they would come in in the morning, and he once left a glass of water on his desk with water in it uh, on the night before he left and the next morning there was a layer of ice on the top of the glass so they uh, they certainly could probably see their breath in this early ACAP office back in 1977 um, but uh, thank you to the individuals who worked in this space uh, and for this agency uh, through our 50 years of service because uh, it's not about the buildings it's really about the people and the people who have served uh, our community through our agency and the people who we've helped uh, in these 50 years so with that that's our throwback snapshot of the week and that's this week's edition of ACAP today we hope to see you this Thursday May 19th at our uh, open house, uh, at our business after hours, at our 771 Main Street facility. And if you're in the Caribou area on the 18th um, at our Caribou Center for our ice cream social there between two and four on Wednesday. Until next week, we'll see you. Have a great week, everyone.